Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Dave Bitter, front-end developer at Frontman, and today I have another Friday tip for you. We're gonna have a look at Danger.js, uh, which is a tool that will help you with your pipelines to perform automated checks uh, for the pull request itself. If we head over to their website, we can see that basically Danger.js uh, runs during your CI process uh, and to do automated uh, common code review chores. Uh, so what a normal workflow would look like is uh, you push your code, you maybe run some lint or some tests, uh, and this is where Danger then comes in uh, to already do some checks for uh, your pull request itself. So you might have some uh, conventions in your team where you say, hey, we need a description, it needs to be a minimum of this long, uh, or some uh, other checks like there's a new JavaScript file added, but there's no test file for it. But all those things uh, can take quite a bit of time uh, if a human needs to do that every time. Uh, and it would be better if you can automate a process like that. So if we scroll a bit further, uh, we can see that in the end, it's basically a, a simple module uh, which exports uh, some utilities for you uh, to run. So let's head over to an actual project uh, of mine, my personal website, and let's see if we can automate some of the stuff that you would normally uh, manually need to do during the review process. You can see my personal website right here. I clone it and I already made some changes. So besides installing Danger.js, of course, uh, I added uh, a file here called the Danger file. And if we open this, uh, we can see that, uh, well, I import the Danger.js module, uh, have a look uh, to see uh, which are the files that are modified. Well, normally you can do this yourself as well, right? Uh, to check, oh, wh which files are changed, but this just makes it easier. There's this utility. You can say, hey, danger.git.modified files. Those are all the files that changed. Uh, so it might be nice to give a short message there in the overview of the pull request to uh, show which files are changed. What we can do as well uh, is say, okay, I use GitHub for my portfolio website. So I might want to have some information from GitHub itself. Uh, for instance, uh, who are the uh, assignees uh, to this pull request? Well, we can easily do that now because we can say, okay, danger.github uh, for this PR, is there, an, is there an assignee? If that's not the case, um, you might want to check, well, is this maybe a work in progress branch? Uh, does somebody uh, just create the pull request, but they don't want to merge it yet, so it's fine. Uh, in that case, um, we uh, want to warn uh, the people saying, hey, you need to uh, add somebody in the end. Uh, but if it's not, if it's a regular pull request, then yeah, we want to, to fill it. Well, with this method then, so warn or fill, uh, we can give some uh, information to the uh, person who opens the pull request. For instance, we need an assignee uh, and optionally maybe include some reviewers uh, to this as well. Uh, well, next to that, we could, for instance, check uh, hey, on GitHub for this PR, uh, get the body and then check whether uh, it's less than 10 characters. In that case, it's probably a super short uh, description, which probably won't say that much about what you changed. Uh, so you could say, okay, hey, we need a description, uh, write a proper description. So these might seem like a super simple tasks, and they are, uh, but you don't want to have to do this uh, manually, a person, uh, for all these pull requests. You can imagine if you work in a very large team, perhaps at a client, and you have 50 developers opening pull requests uh, all over the place, uh, it can well, be quite a hassle to every time say, hey, remember, you have to do this. And usually you would write something like that in the documentation, uh, but it always slips through. And this is a nice tool to, uh, well, let people already make the perfect pull request. So it makes it easier to uh, review uh, their code changes. Great, so now we have this file. Uh, we need to run this, of course. Uh, what I'm gonna use uh, since I'm using GitHub is GitHub Actions, uh, which is GitHub's way to let you run these, these pipelines and these automated tasks. Uh, if you've never worked with GitHub Actions, I actually got a Friday tip about it, uh, which you can watch uh, and I'll make sure to uh, link it below. If we head over to the .github folder with the workflows, we can see that I actually already got some automated tasks for my portfolio website, uh, but I added a new file called danger.yaml. And if we open this up, well, we gave it uh, a name for now, danger, yes. Uh, and we can actually say, oh, on this event, uh, I want to run this. So whenever somebody makes a pull request, uh, I have some jobs to do. Uh, so it's gonna run on the latest Ubuntu. That's gonna have some steps, uh, but in the end, it's just gonna run uh, the danger CI. 
what this danger CI does is it will uh, take this danger file.js and it will actually execute it uh, and will handle it accordingly. So let's make a commit. For instance, I added the danger.js example and we're gonna push it to danger.js. We head over to GitHub. Uh, we can go to my pull request uh, and we can see that hey, you just push this, so compare pull request. Uh, and uh, I can well, write a comment. Uh, this is a test for danger, yes. So when I create this pull request, and we wait for a second, you can see that some of the uh, CI is going to run. So I got uh, preview branches for my website. That's outside of the scope of this video, uh, but you can see that the danger.js uh, rule is being kicked off because of the pull request. So if we have a look, uh, we can see that it's setting everything up, installing everything, um, and then running danger uh, to check. After it's done, we can go back. After refreshing the page, we can see that the GitHub actions say, hey, there are some fails. Uh, the pull request need, needs an assignee. Uh, and maybe some reviewers, uh, as well as the message that we added saying uh, these are the files that changed. Um, so this makes sense. Uh, let's add myself as an assignee. Um, and what we need to do now, of course, is to run that action again. So let's head over to the checks. We can see the danger.js task here, and we can rerun this job. So it's going to run it again. We can go back to the pull request. And we can see that the check is started here uh, in progress. Go to details, you can see that again, it's setting everything up uh, and using the correct node version. Then it's running danger again. And when it's done, we can go back to the pull request. Then we need to give it a sec. Can maybe refresh and we can see that now the danger.js uh, task has successfully uh, been executed uh, and as well uh, that the message with the error is is gone so this indicates to uh, well i'm the only person working on this project but to the team uh, that uh, everything is fine right now these are the changed files and uh, you're free to uh, to review the code now you can do whatever you want of course you can create your own file and uh, enforce the rules that you have on your project. So DangerJS is not going to offer you uh, a bunch of standard rules or templates or whatnot. No, it's going to offer you the utilities. And with those utilities, you can well, easily uh, create your own checks uh, specific to your project. This will in the end help your team with uh, having a better workflow for pull requests uh, and automating some stuff that normally you would have to do manually uh, with somebody's time. Um, that's all for today. So as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.